What if I told you that modern science would soon make it possible to have a light source in our homes that would eliminate shadows, be at least six times as efficient as the old 40 watt light bulb and last 10 times as long? This magic light source makes use of a thing called single quantum photoabsorption, where atoms of a substance are raised to an excited state by the absorption of incident radiation and return to their original state by re-emitting light. Sound a little fantastic? Well, modern science did invent this thing in 1867. The first practical one was constructed in 1939, and they've been overhead ever since. The fluorescent light gets its name from the coating on the inside of the tubing. Fluorescence is a phenomenon where certain substances will emit light when they're stimulated by other radiation. Invisible ultraviolet light's the biggie when it comes to the original stimulus. Some rocks found in nature fluoresce, and some laundry detergents leave tiny fluorescent particles in your clothes so that ultraviolet light from the sun will make them appear brighter. The television you're looking at right now uses fluorescent particles to display my handsome face, only there's no ultraviolet in the picture tube. The stimulus there is from a beam of electrons. A fluorescent light uses a mercury arc to provide the ultraviolet source. The tube is officially a low-pressure mercury discharge tube. High-pressure mercury arc lamps are used to light roads and stadiums, and another metal vapor arc lamp is also used for street lighting, sodium vapor, the yellowish ones. The low-pressure mercury discharge tube mostly emits ultraviolet light, but that fluorescent coating changes that energy to visible light. The color of fluorescent light can be controlled by choosing different phosphors, and that's why these come in so many different flavors. The shadowless quality of the fixtures has nothing to do with the arc or the coating. It's just that tiny little light sources create shadows. And the big ones, like the sky on a cloudy day or a three-foot fluorescent tube, don't. One of the reasons that these lights haven't simply taken over is that they require more parts. The mercury vapor arc is ionized gas, Lightning is also ionized gas. In the case of lightning, uh, gas is air. Unionized gas doesn't conduct electricity. It's a darn good thing in the case of air. Ionized gas not only conducts electrical current, it conducts more current as the current it's conducting increases. That would lead to a rapid destruction of the tube without this black lump. This is the ballast. In the old days, the ballast was just a big coil of wire. The arc was initiated by heating cathodes in the end of the tube. And the cathodes are coated with a substance that readily gives off electrons when heated. A small starter would preheat those cathodes and then give the coil an electrical flick, like the points in a car ignition to a spark coil. The resulting spike of high voltage would cause the gas to ionize and conduct. As soon as the gas conducted, the ballast would then limit the current to a safe value, and the cathodes would continue to be heated by the arc itself. You still find this operation on a desk lamp that has a manual push-to-start switch. Holding the switch preheats the cathodes. Releasing it strikes the arc. This one's a demonstration lamp from General Electric. The fact that it's only coated halfway is the demonstration part. The dents in the bulb are a new design that gives the tube more surface area to emit light. Most fixtures now are the rapid start type. The ballast contains additional windings that heat the cathodes continuously just a bit. This allows the lamp to start right away and run even more efficiently. Some ballasts aren't ballasts at all. This one's a high frequency generator that excites the gas without really striking the arc. This type of system isn't as efficient, but it allows the tubes to be operated from low voltage battery supplies. The fluorescent flashlight uses this technique. The fluorescent light's a very efficient way to create light from electricity. An incandescent light works by heating a metal to the point where it gives off light. The direct excitation of atoms results in a light with very little heat. And those are the two reasons that fluorescents are always used in large buildings. Oh, you only heard one reason? Well, it's two. The direct conversion to light saves on light per watt. And the absence of heat saves on air conditioning. The unit that's used to measure emitted light is the lumen. A 40-watt fluorescent lamp produces more than 70 lumens per watt, while a 40-watt incandescent only gets up about 12. Because nothing in the fluorescent is burning, so to speak, their life can be as high as 20,000 hours. The reason that incandescents hang on has to do with convenience. It's simple to change the wattage of one. 
you just replace it with another one. But the fluorescent ballast has to be designed for a specific lamp. So you might change a cool white for a daylight, but they're going to have to be the same wattage tube. Advances in manufacturing have created smaller and smaller power supplies for fluorescent lamps. And you can now get one that screws right into the incandescent socket, ballast and all. Modern science will now have to attend to the final problem of the fluorescent incandescent replacement scheme. How to hold the lampshade.